Today we're here to introduce a brand new truck from a brand new company. This is the Element RC Enduro. What's going on guys? Here in front of us we've got the brand new Enduro. Element RC is a new company started by a very familiar company. Associated Electrics, or Associated as most of you know them, have started this new division or new company and this is their first release and their entry into the 1 10th scale scale truck market. This is the Enduro Sendero. The Sendero is the body and basically the model type and Enduro is the platform that it sits on. So if you put that all together, you've got the Element RC Enduro Sendero. It's a lot of names to remember all at once, but you know, that happens with the new companies. But let's jump right in and show you guys around this new truck. So let's start from the outside and work our way in. We've got a truck body that's mounted here. It's a true two-piece body. It's non-licensed, but it's got some stylings familiar in a lot of different ways to several trucks. But overall, I like the truck and it's kind of in that SEMA gray and you know gloss, non-metallic gray. I like the color choice. It's trendy right now and I, and I like the way that they went with it. And it's paired with a set of licensed gold method wheels. Those method wheels have licensed General Grabber tires on it, and overall the tires feel pretty good. Excited to get these out on the rocks and see how they truly do out there. These methods are actually molded in a gold or bronze color, so there won't be any scratching that color off. There is a center cap on those wheels as well, but it easily twists off so you can get access to your wheel nuts without any additional tools. One other thing to note is that these are a beadlock wheel. The six screws around the center of the wheel is what actually mounts the wheel halves together. So those are what holds it all together. There are no screws in the back and there are no beadlock screws on the front either. At the front side of the body, we do have a hard molded plastic grill with a sticker behind it to give it some more detail. The headlights have a sticker over them, kind of giving you that look of a true headlight. But behind that, there is actually headlight buckets with LEDs pre-installed. So the decal over the headlight area is just something to give it a little extra detail when the light isn't on. And below the grill, we've got a large molded plastic bumper with an integrated fair lead and a couple more spots for LEDs as well as some D-ring mounts on on the very leading edge. The other scale details it has includes some windshield wipers and folding side mirrors. Switching to the rear of the truck, again, like we mentioned, it is a two-piece body. So you could technically separate the bed from the cab if you only wanted to run the cab and put something behind it like a truggy style base or something along those lines, or it gives you a lot of options for customizing down the road. You will have to note though that the rear of the body does mount through the bed. So if you decided you wanted to get rid of that portion, you'd have to figure out how you're going to mount it again. So just something to note, but it is nice to see a true two-piece body. And rounding at the rear of the truck we do have a full width plastic molded bumper again with a couple of d-ring mounts this truck does have adjustable width molded rock rails on the side to give that body some protection and you can narrow them or widen them depending on the body that you plan to use or if you plan to leave the stock body there's even some room still from the factory to narrow them up get things tucked in a little bit more now before i show you guys under the body i want to show you guys a couple of things in the box now i'm not going to go over the box there's a lot on it going over all the details the specifications some you know pretty pictures and that's all fine and fun and i'll let you guys experience reading the box for yourselves when you get your own but what i want to show you is actually inside the box and it's not actually parts or anything like that it's still the box but this box is different on the inside and i'll show you why When you open this thing up, inside you've got a little scale garage. I'm not big on saving boxes for things that I buy, but this one's pretty cool. I'll, I'll give them that. This was a nice added touch. So when you buy your Enduro, you can open up your box, take it apart, set your truck in there and take its very first picture in a scale setting. I may do it just for the thumbnail of this video even. But now that we've covered that small detail on the box, let's take off this body and I'll show you what lies underneath. When taking off the body, you'll see that there's a servo style plug that goes to the included front LED headlights that you'll disconnect from the ESC side to power those up. And then of course you can see that the front and rear halves of the body are mounted together with these molded backing plates. But underneath of course is what we're really concerned about. So here we've got an up close look at the platform underneath. So we'll start at the front and work our way towards the rear. 
We saw already the front molded bumper that fits with that Sendero body, but mounting that bumper to the chassis is a molded chassis brace that has standard 43 millimeter spacing from center of post to center of post. That will allow you to use most popular post style front bumpers. As we move further back, we'll see that we have dual servo mounting positions, one for a steering servo and one presumably for a winch servo. And that winch servo would line up with the fair lead in the front bumper here. So, so if you wanted to combine those two things, you have that option. The molded shock towers integrate the body post mounting. And on the left side here, you'll see that we've got a pan hard mount that extends down from the front side of the shock tower. And the pan hard screws directly from the bottom into that pan hard mount. Speaking of those shock towers attached to them, we do have some very familiar associated shocks here. These things feel great and there's a ton of upgrades available for these based on previous associated style buggy shocks. So I fully expect these shocks to be great performers. The diameter on them is a little bit larger than some scale shocks, but they look great and they feel really well also. Next in the chassis, we've got a molded battery box. Now this battery box is actually quite short. This would not fit a full-size battery pack. However, in the box, you will find that there's a second included molded battery box that will fit a full-size battery. So if you plan to run full-size battery packs, you will need to swap out this shorty box for the full-size version. With this kit, Associated also sent me one of their shorty packs. This is a 3000 milliamp 2S pack. I don't run a lot of 2S, but for a shorty pack, I'm gonna give this one a shot when I do my initial testing on this vehicle. And then we've got the heart of this Enduro package. This is the new Stealth X transmission. Now, this is a three gear transmission, kind of. It's actually got five gears inside of it. And that's because this truck out of the box includes an overdrive transmission. That means that it spins the front axle faster than it spins the rear axle. Overdriving a front axle or spinning it faster than the rear allows you to turn a little tighter and it also aids in steep climbs. Beyond the overdrive that's included inside of the Stealth X transmission, there's actually two other ratios that you can run. One is a configuration that runs no overdrive at all. It matches the front speed to the rear speed, so it's just like a traditional transmission. The other option is a further overdrive situation where you change out two gears and it allows you to increase the percentage of overdrive that you have going to that front axle. Out of the box, there's a 5.7% overdrive to the front axle. And if you would like to increase the overdrive to 11.83%, they actually included the gears in the spare parts bag to do so. The idler gear is a cast metal. The included final gear is plastic. If you'd like to go to the configuration with no overdrive at all, you will have to purchase those gears separately. Next to that Stealth X transmission, we've got a waterproof receiver box. And on the other side, we've got a standard ESC. And this ESC does come with a Dean style power plug pre-installed. As we move to the rear of the car, there's not much else to discuss. We've got molded shock towers again with those nice feeling shocks, a simple cross brace and a rear bumper mount with again, that standard bumper mounting spacing. From here, we can go to the underside of the vehicle. The transmission mounting on this vehicle does use a very familiar bolt pattern and that will allow you to use other aftermarket transmission options if you've got some favorite accessories you'd like to see. From the skid plate moving outwards, we do have five millimeter steel links and we've got some really nice hard plastic rod ends at both ends. Attaching that Stealth X transmission to the axles, we do have telescoping type drive shafts with an aluminum slider between the two female ends. The rear uses a traditional and typically seen double triangulated four link suspension. The front uses a three link with pan hard suspension. Now the steering is a little different than you may have seen as it uses a behind the axle or BTA tie rod. This is the link that ties the two knuckles together. So as you steer, that is what transmits the power from the side attached to the servo to the side that's not. The knuckles use an aluminum plate that mounts to the top side to attach the drag link and tie rod. On the side that both the drag link and tie rod are connected to, you'll see that it's got a double-sided aluminum plate. However, on the other side, you've got a single-sided as that's only got one link attached to it. Inside these axles, we've got a 3.75 to one ratio ring and pinion gear. These are a helical cut gear with a standard output pinion. That means the pinion comes out on the center line of the ring gear. Connecting the ring gear to the wheels, we have a set of steel universal axle shafts. The outside of the axle housing uses a C-hub that slides onto a spline design. And then the rear axle uses a one-piece axle design with no rear outer lockout. 
Out of the box, this vehicle does use a brushed motor as almost all ready to run crawlers in this market do. However, this one is a five slot armature. And the difference between that and a typical brushless motor that uses three slots is that this motor will be much smoother than a typical sealed can ready to run style motor. This is rated at a 16 turn, which is closest equivalent to a 35 turn three slot motor that you may be more familiar with. So while 16 turn may sound fast for you, it's not it's going to be a very familiar speed to something like a 35 turn that you're already used to using. This is just going to have a smoother startup. The radio that's included in the box looks very familiar to some of the other associated radios that I've seen. However, this one is a three channel radio with a three position switch here on the front side of the steering wheel. And also inside the box, you'll find a large sticker sheet here with all kinds of scale stickers, including bumper sticker styles, custom license plates where you can you know, cut out your own letters and put them onto the different color license plates they have as well as license plate frames tire stickers in case you want to set up a stack of tires that looks like they're new and then of course just a bunch of other stickers including a couple of harley stickers which is pretty cool to see the owner's manual is nice and detailed, walks you through step by step how you would assemble this as if it were a kit. They do call each step gate, <laughs> gate one, gate two, gate three, which is kind of a cool little touch if you're into, you know, trail crawling or comp crawling where we have always are used to going through gates. And of course the actual cover of this looked very familiar to me and I was trying to place where it was and then I remembered that it looks like an old Hayes vehicle manual where it kind of had the cutaway transparent line drawing style uh, look. So I just did a quick Google search and it's almost exactly like it. They replaced the Hayes logo with their Element logo. Enduro is where it would usually say the type of vehicle and then it would have years and makes here as well as you know the type of manual that it was across the top. So a cool touch especially if you kind of remember some of those older manuals. This owner's manual will actually teach you a lot if you're really looking to get into the different configurations of that Stealth X gearbox and how you can set it up. You can also flip the transmission around in case you want to point the motor forward or point the motor rearward. You can take and flip where those gear ratios go to make sure that you're giving the proper act the amount of overdrive that you're looking to add. And then once you get through all the steps and everything, there's a little checklist here at the end, trail tips and checklist, gives you a little list of the things that you should remember to bring when you go out for a trail ride. There was also this flyer in there, which shows that they're going to have option parts such as spring sets for their shocks, which of course they have a number of different shock components since you can completely build those shocks just like you would a full race shock. Looks like they've got their method wheels in different colors and we can see here they've got machined transmission gears coming available. The Stealth X transmission parts, shock pieces, and a number of other things like that are being sold under the factory team line. So another familiar name that you should be used to seeing if you've been around RC a while. Then they list all of their Reedy electronics options and a bunch of Element RC apparel and things like that. They actually sent me a bunch of it. I forgot to wear it today when I shot this video, but it's available and you can pick some up yourself if you'd like. So that's going to be my first look here at the Element RC Enduro. Looking forward to getting this thing out on the rocks and seeing how it performs. I plan to shoot video of that and I'll upload it as soon as I have time to get it edited. I'll make, sure to put a, I'll make sure to put a link in the description below to where you can find all of the information about this vehicle so that you can check it out, see if it's something that needs to be added to your stable. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. If you don't, there's a button for that too. Make sure and subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.